Why do you want to live off grid? That's what he wants to know. <laughs> Get it right, Edda. <laughs> <sighs> That's fun. In one of the most remote corners of northwestern Montana, John and Etta Smith are building a home and bison ranch. It's been John's dream since he was a kid. Completely off the grid. Living and building off grid is really nothing more than just a throwback to how people used to live. They will stop at nothing to make their dream come true. There's a lot to be done on the house. Weather, cold. Daylight, it's just impeding progress even more. Today, I'm going to build the tower. I feel like 50% confident that this will work. You know, I just realized that's really dangerous. Babe, be careful. Oh. Failure is not an option. That's how it's done. You don't get a vacation with When you yeah. are a rancher, yeah. it's, um, it's a lifestyle. It's a seven-day job. In the constant battle against the ravages of winter, John and Etta Smith still need to finish building their home. The wraparound porch and its roof still aren't finished. And the house still needs siding and doors. Interior work's been put on hold for now in the mad dash to finish the exterior of the house before yet another big Montana snowstorm hits. I think we have about 30 more days to complete the house. That's our deadline. Well, they may be under the gun to finish the house build. The bison are on their way to enjoying their freedom. I let the first bison out. Um, it was the matriarch of the herd. She's doing really well. She's staying close to the corrals with all the other bison in there. She's kind of explored a little bit, but doesn't go too far, which is just what I wanted to see. I'm planning on letting the rest of them out today. As I'm opening the gate, the ones who realize that this opening and portal is there, they're bolting out there full speed. I can tell they're all very happy by their body language. But for better or for worse, winter has taken a firm hold. And that does not make for ideal conditions for finishing up this off-the-grid house and ranch. Winter adds a whole new element to the whole process. There's not very much daylight that we have to work with. So every baby step they make is a victory in its own right. We poured the concrete for our wraparound porch, which is going to go on here pretty soon before the weather comes in. It's cold out here. It's been anywhere from 0 to 12 degrees uh, every day. The porch is going to wrap around half of the house, and it's going to be 6 feet wide with its own awning over it, and I'm super excited for that to be done. I foresee a lot of nights on that porch, and I see a lot of... Um, a lot of good times with my family. I'm really excited. This is standing dead fir trees that they cut down. It has this nice rough pattern on it from when they sent it through a big circle saw. It'll look really cool when it grays up. We're not going to treat it with anything and just um, let it weather like you would on an old homestead house. But just as the porch bill takes off in earnest... As you can see, it's already started snowing. This snowstorm, one of just many that seems to happen every other day here. The build hits yet another weather-related roadblock. It's just impeding progress even more. Daylight, weather, cold. There's a lot to be done on the house, um, and I, I'm just hoping and praying that it gets done by the deadline. After nearly a month of waiting... The exterior doors for the house have arrived at the cabin, and Etta is eager to prep and stain them. Can you open the door for them? Hello. Can you open the door for Papa? Hi. Don't let it tip. Are we going to clear? No. Nope. As we're unloading the doors right now, I realize the doors are not French doors. Hey, Chris. Yeah? So, I thought we were getting French doors. Uh, not, that's not what our, is on the architect's specs. That's the way it was on the drawing. Only one opens. Oh, it's really? one opener. Yeah, they're patio doors, meaning they look like French doors, but only one opens, and there's not a handle on the second door. I mean, that's probably like 20, 30 times mentioned at least to Jay. But, but not to me. Nobody ever mentioned it to me. I swear that I've talked to you about yeah. French doors. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just bummed out. Josh and I are unloading these doors. I realized that these are not French doors. They're patio doors, meaning they look like French doors, but only one opens and there's not a handle on the second door. I figured that was the way you wanted it because if you look on the plan, there always one, only one swings. 
people. No. I think we both wanted French doors, but... So these doors are $5,000. It's not just like a simple, I'm going to go return them and get another set of doors. A little bit of frustration went through me there. And uh, as would any person, you know, this is a lot of money. You know, I'm going to be spending the rest of my life paying this house off. The guy could work with us and get double doors out, but it's going to basically delay everything four to five weeks and put us way out in our schedule. Well, or we can just, go with these and make these. this happen now. Let's just use these. Okay. Yeah. Solved. At this point, we have the doors. I, I don't want to send these doors back and get new doors and them not show up on time or something happen. So I think we're just going to stick with these doors and, and go with it. Are you sure you want to do these red? Yeah. Yeah. Just making sure. Okay. This is our first house that we will live in together. So I think we kind of want to personalize it and just make it ours. Looks really good. I'm going to sand it and then put the dark stain on it and um, it'll give it more of a, like, a rustic look to it. Oh, thank you. Although Ed has made a solid start on the doors, finishing them will have to wait. Cindy and I are off to California. I'm gonna pick up some work at the racetrack and um, kind of fill our bank a little bit more. I'm gonna stay here and just suffer in the cold and work alone and just be alone um, while Etta enjoys California and the warm sandy beaches. With Etta gone and temperatures in the single digits, John is flying solo assembling the windmill. The quicker it's up, the easier it will be to provide water to the bison on the ranch. The instructions said, go rent a crane and put this thing up. Well, out here to rent a crane would cost me a couple thousand bucks to rent that. When you're trying to start a ranch and get everything going, that's unaffordable. You know, I can't, I can't spend that kind of money. So as a result, I decided to build it the way that they used to build it 100 years ago, which is dig the holes, put the base legs in, and then build it from the ground up piece by piece. I'm just going to run and grab some boards and put them across so I have a little work platform on there, and I can start in on the second section making progress right here that'll be the size of my next work platform it just gets smaller and tighter um, harder to maneuver all these pieces around while John figures out his next move Etta has already started work training racehorses in California so when you build a house there's there's all sorts of things that suck up money so this is just gonna help um, fund some of the things that we're gonna have to do here at the racetrack what I do is um, I break the colts, and then when they're here up at the main racetrack, I take them out for their morning training. Kind of a sad month for me. This is the month that I lost my mom. My mom died on, on racehorses, and uh, she got in a bad accident, and she broke her neck. Um, so it was always something that my dad probably really didn't want me to do. And um, I was pretty terrified of horses for a long time. But the second I got back on that race horse, oh my gosh, I was at home and, and I was happy and it feels really good. Back at the ranch, the windmill continues to grow. But John has to improvise since Ed is not here to help. I've got this beam behind me to lean this beam on. So it holds the top of this beam in place as I'm bringing it up. I feel like 50% confident that this will work. But it will be worth it once it's done. It'll be like a monument to hard work and suffering. Okay, here we go. I mean, the beam itself is maybe 50, 70 pounds. Physically, it's hard with one person. Oh, gosh, that's heavy. I have to wait for Edda to come back. It's very hard by yourself. That's a real challenge. To avoid damaging something or getting hurt, having Edda here is definitely going to be the best case scenario. So when she gets back, we'll finish up the windmill. Although it's another bitterly cold day during John and Edda Smith's house build in Montana, there's a lighter mood in the air. Etta has returned home from her job in California training horses. I miss California. I miss the heat. Well, not the heat. I mean, it's 60 degrees, but it's hot compared to here. But I'm happy to be home with my family, and it's good to be home. Despite the icy winter weather, construction on the home's wraparound porch is inching along, slowly but surely. 
On the porch, we have the rafters on. Above these exposed rafters, we'll have that sheeting. Put the tar paper on, and then on top of there, we will have corrugated steel roofing. Perfect. We're gonna just have a little bit more left on the roof. Measure this next piece and cut it, and move to the other side, and then we'll be done. The metal roofing is not galvanized, meaning it's just going to start rusting and look like an old rusty roof on a homestead that you'd see out here. It's extremely thick. You, like it? It? you want it to be able to rust for many years before you get holes in it. This is not the type of weather that you want to be doing this in right now. It's really cold. This metal is very slick. Woo! Got it? Yeah. How do I do? Perfect. It's the last piece. But now that the metal roof has been installed and Etta is on hand to help, it's back to the grindstone on John's toughest project today. That platform that's over there, how heavy would you say that is? <sighs> Maybe 30 pounds. Well, let me just see if it's even practical for me to balance high enough to put this thing over the top. I'm very impressed that you did this all by yourself. When I was gone in California, John put up half of the tower by himself. I might be able to get it, Etta. You'll be able just to take it and shoulder press it up and drop it down. It's nice to have somebody else out there with me when I'm doing this kind of stuff. And if I can't get it, worst case scenario, I drop it. So if you just want to stay out of the way. Okay. Just having somebody there makes all the difference. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's see, so when I lift this up, mm, just don't want this to hit me in the face. Okay, ready? Set, go. Oh. You got it, babe. Okay, man, there's no good way to do this. You got it. Oh. I believe in you. Good job, babe. Oh. Do you want to come down for a little bit? I just need that little piece right there. Okay, can I go up and try? Yeah. I think it's really important to have two sets of eyes looking at something because I noticed that how the, the platform was sitting, it maybe just needed to get jostled around a little bit. Are you trying to one-up me? No. I just have a little bit more height. Are you calling me short? Yes. Okay. There's a ton of things that I can't do that you can do a hell of a lot better. But this is what marriage is all about, isn't it? Yeah. At a save the day, really just being able to help me finish putting this platform on. There's no way I could have done that myself. Nobody that I know has a wife that's that cool. So, thank you for doing that. How's it going? Hey, I'm just getting ready to put this porch on if you want to help. Okay, sounds good. John and I are gonna try to conquer the decking. What are we doing here? Are we just cutting notches out or gonna yeah, butt it so up? Yeah, so right here, just to make it around, this is a six inch post. Right. We want it to come out an inch and a quarter off this deck. John and I have different ways of doing things. And it's gonna take a little while just to butt it up and make it so it's like perfectly right. straight. So this will be really interesting. We're using unfinished rough cut wood for the deck. It's gonna make it look like a real old homestead house, you know, that's been out here for a hundred years. So what we ought to do maybe first is cut this first one. I want more sticking off that end so that we can trim that end. Um, let's see. Just start from in here. Make a straight cut up the side following. Or like that. Maybe run it up the side there to make that edge pretty. John is a supervisor. That's what he has done his whole professional life. What she's trying to say is sometimes I micromanage, which I do. You might want to like sit on it because it's going to be jumping up and down. Sit on the board or stand on it. <sighs> I think that looks like it's gonna be a little short. It is. Dang it. Uh-oh. Looks like it's gonna be a little short. It is. I forgot to add the two inches on it. All right. Dang it. On John and Etta's off-the-grid build, they've run into a problem with the decking on the wraparound porch. I'm just measuring out the notches to cut them so that they fit. These boards fit around the six by six posts. Okay, one more time. Now we're gonna cut this and it'll be right. It's a small problem, 
but with the build weeks behind schedule, they can't afford any more delays. Oh, shoot. What? These came off right here. This is the problem of working with rough cut and not heat treated. Because we put just a little bit of pressure on it, it cracked all the way off. Well, I can just screw it in. Let's just put a screw in it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're a good team. We go and want to conquer the problem together. And it's, it's awesome being able to have a partner like that. So while you're doing that, do you want me to start measuring the second one here? Sure. I can't imagine if we weren't able to communicate. Oh my gosh, this would just be a horrible time together. <laughs> Once I finish this and wrap it around the post, for this little section, we'll just boop, 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 put all the boards down, and it will go very quickly. The biggest projects we have left are really right now the windmill. Okay, I got it, man. I still need to figure out how I'm going to lift this huge motor up on top of the windmill and then attach the blades to it and run the, you know, pumping rods on it. So we'll take it out there and see what we can do? Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's yeah. get going. Okay. Can I have a hug? Yeah. You're okay. <laughs> I'm just going to grab all the rest relax, of the pieces. Okay. Relax. It feels overwhelming to try to figure out how to do all this when it's freezing cold. But life on the ranch has a way of putting stress into perspective. All the buffalo just kind of quietly walked over, and it was really surreal. It was really awesome. Even though things aren't going perfectly, this was a nice moment. Not a lot of people get to experience something like that. Finally, the windmill tower is ready for the next daunting task. Raising the motor to the top. Perfect. The motor is really heavy and awkward. Okay. When this thing's done, I will be so happy. Okay, you ready? Yep. Teamwork is the only way to get things done around here. <laughs> oh, that makes me nervous. Watch out up there. Okay. It really does make me nervous because if that log slips, it's going to knock me right in the head. One, two, three. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Babe, be careful. One, two, three. Okay, right there. Oh, my goodness. That's heavy. Yeah. Let it out a hair. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Hang on. There we go. Yeah! And we did it! Yay! I was so excited. Feels good when things go how they're supposed to. It feels really good to have the motor up there. The windmill's not totally done, but it's all downhill from here. You know, the worst of it is over with. Every once in a while, you get one of these golden days that just everything seems to go right. You get everything all put together. You get a lot of work done. You just sleep really good at night. And you wake up feeling good, and that'll be tomorrow. Next time on Building Off the Grid, Big Sky Ranch. It's a cold morning. The roof is extremely slippery. Kind of made my heart jump a little bit. Fireplace is very tedious work. I've got 196 left to go. This isn't going to work. Today we're going to round up the cows. Aviation and ranching have gone together for a long time. It's efficient, it's fast, and it's fun.